Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jump Up Supercast, the only podcast on the internet willing to say that, hey, Joe Biden won the election. I'm willing to join me this week, Brandon. Thank fucking God. Ills. Oh, I'm second this time. Oh, fuck you, dude. And Ms. Mill. <laughs> <laughs> and fuck Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, the thing, so to give a little bit behind the curtain. Uh, uh, this is our third take of this intro because I keep <laughs> messing up. Uh, and I realized normally I do moves last, but the, yeah. The, so I, I I went with the normal pattern, but that was not what we did before. Time, the back to normal, the back to norm, just like yeah. Joe Biden will lead us back to norm. Oh, <laughs> no. Fingers crossed. Eradicate the virus. Yeah. Look, well, I, himself. Himself. I mean, the, I'm here to say I am elated. I am happy. If you supported Donald Trump, go fuck yourself. You yeah, lost. Fuck you. I, I you agree. Know. Go fuck yourself. We, Joe Biden won. Donald Trump is... You know how many one-term presidents there have been? Not many. You have to be like a special kind of loser to be a one-term president. <laughs> and that's Donald Trump, everyone. Mm-hmm. So, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there it is. Uh, it's, it's weird because you're so negative in text, but yeah, I was, I was, you, you know, actually say you're happy is fucking weird it, it, I, I i've gone through the s- some waves of emotions you know mm-hmm. um, maybe it wasn't everything you could have hoped for it wasn't everything that i wanted it wasn't everything that i could have hoped for but ultimately like you know at some point it dawned on me the realization that donald trump will no longer be president and that in of itself is a wonderful thing for the country and a wonderful <laughs> thing for the world so, yeah, yeah. So that's going to be our whole podcast. It's just a politics podcast this week. <laughs> uh, no, we won't do that. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a it's a big occasion. We can't not. A momentous it. occasion. A, 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 you know, time to celebrate, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what better way to celebrate than talking and playing video games, right? Amen. Uh, so that is... Uh, so that's the podcast. That's no. <laughs> the podcast. That's the podcast. Now we're going no, to play uh, video games, boys. Yeah. <laughs> no <list>. uh, <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't, uh, news is, I think video game companies are aware, hey, you probably don't want to have a ton of news this week, right? Yeah. It's going to get drowned. It's going to get buried this week. You know? Um, but, uh, there was still some news, but there was also just, did any of you guys use video games to cope throughout this whole deal? Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I'd say I don't know if I'd say cope, but uh, you know, I had a duty called the Game Club. No, uh, <laughs> Does it go away? No matter what's going on in the world, the Game Club lives on. Yeah. Yeah. The world could be on fire and I'm still playing some fucking game. You're still playing crazy. like fucking Trash It Three, the Revenge of Lucky Luke. <laughs> you know? Don't what the that. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a possible we- what? <laughs> You know how, like, the angry video game nerd made a game with, with like, a bunch of end jokes, right? Uh-huh. Like, we just need to use, like, hell to make the ultimate nightmare game. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> just combine uh, all, all those games together. Yeah. Just the, the, the worst parts of each of them. Oh, oh God. That'd wonderful. Be awful. I mean, you know what? People would like that game, like, ironically, so. What yeah. have you been playing for the Jump Up Supercast Game Club, Brandon? Uh, this little Brandon. game called... Jet Force Gemini, which is, uh, you know, it's a rare game. It's a real piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) You get to hear all about this real piece of shit pretty soon. Yeah, Mm -hmm. next, uh, uh, this coming Thursday, actually. If you can pull yourself away from your next-gen consoles uh, long enough to listen to it. uh, Us talk about an old Nintendo 64 game. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of next-gen consoles... I have a next gen controller in my hands right now. Mm. I have the dual sense controller. It's literally in my hands, been in my hands this whole time. <laughs> mm-hmm. I saw people yeah, I saw the the ship though. You can, I think you can buy them now, right? Yeah, yeah. I bought one on Best Buy. Uh the it it came in today. Today being Friday before uh, it came out. Um what kind now, of weirdo you? just holds a controller while he's re- recording a podcast? Uh, yeah, I just, I've just been holding the controller while, while so I'm recording weird. a podcast. I mean, it's a new toy, right? I'm like, yeah, this is... It, I, mean, I want to get a feel for it. Like, well, what's going on here? This is probably going to become my primary PC controller. But I haven't used it at all in gameplay yet, which is probably the most important thing for a controller. Um, but I do have impressions, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. 
Describe, stick the controller in your mouth and see how it feels. All right, uh, so it's a little too big to fit in my mouth. I'm not going to lie. I, I, uh, I, I may have attempted that already, but... Uh, that's that's quitter talk right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, that is true. But, you know, it's got a little heft to it. It, it, it almost, like, it kind of feels more like an Xbox controller now, just in the way it feels. Like, it's hefty, it's more curved, and it, it just has a more Xboxy feel. Obviously, the sticks are still at the bottom, though, so there's still that going for it. And I, I do prefer that stick placement, personally. Mm-hmm. But um, Gross. Yeah, yeah, I know. I agree. Like, people have their different... People have their... Now, the DualSense is funny, because, like, really what sets it apart is the special features that will be on the PS5, right? The haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers. I can't tell you about any of those. <laughs> no, none of those work unless I'm playing on a PlayStation 5, which I do not have yet. Um, you, you don't know. even have one pre-ordered. I don't even have one pre-ordered. I have a PS5 controller, but I do not have a PS5. Welcome to the club, uh, buddy. Mm-hmm. I even have a PS5 game pre-ordered, actually, finally. I got Miles and Morales for $21, thanks to Walmart. Pricing That's here. What, was that when they randomly fucked up the other night? Yeah, it was, they randomly fucked up at like yeah. 3 a.m. I I woke up at like six and tried, and I, I saw the tweet. I think it was Wario sixty four, and I was yeah, like, oh, yeah. I saw the yeah. Wario. I happened to be awake when Wario sixty four tweeted that at like three in the morning, and I was like, oh, "Why not? Lucky. Fuck it, right?" Like, <laughs> worst case scenario it gets canceled. So far, so good though. So you um, changed your position on getting a PS five right away, or I I am going to attempt to get a PS five. Yes. Um, huh. Did you sell I, someone your pre-order or something? I did sell. I have Jesus. one pre-ordered, and I sold it to someone because I was like, I don't want a PS5. Aren't, no, I really want Also, a PS5. aren't you losing a bet by buying a PS5? I am, like yes. There's, there's a lot of things wrong with me buying a PS5. I, <laughs> I mean, it's weird. Like, I'm kind of, I kind of, I don't know. I think it's, I don't know if it's like this for you, but I kind of want to do it just as therapeutic spending, right? Just yeah, as like a... I want to treat myself a little bit, you know? A, a little bit. That's kind of part of it, right? I'm just like, I want to focus my energy on something else now. You know, I've been so hyper-focused on the election. And I'm just like, I need I need something else. And then I saw, you know, I'm a big fan of Astrobot, right? Mm-hmm. And the reviews for Astro's Playroom dropped. And it's a real game. And it's a real game. And it's a real good game, apparently. And, and the fact that it's just packed in, it's, you know, oh, pretty cool. I want that game. I really want that game. Astro's Playroom looks it. And then Demon Souls. I'm a new, newly converted from soft evangelist, right? Mm-hmm. I, I hate that word. Uh, <laughs> those words put together. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. Like, I played Sekiro and I was just like, holy shit, this game is amazing. And so now I want to play more from soft games, right? What better place to start than Demon Souls? And now it's been remade from the ground up. It's super wow. gorgeous. And- a yeah. better place to start would be uh, Metal Wolf Chaos, because that came before it. Well, yeah, okay, but modern from soft, you know what I mean, right? The the, the Souls born games, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Souls like. I don't. Do we have a name for that genre yet? <laughs> Souls. I think we'll just say Souls born, which like, yeah, who knows? Um, but yeah, that's uh, I think those are fair reasons. I think that you don't need to justify buying a console. I, I, well, I need to justify it because I made a big, big stink about how I'm definitely not buying one. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, and now, you know, everyone, everyone who bet against me, which was everyone, uh, yeah. you're, you're all right. Okay. Did you, you made like a $60 bet on Astro's Playroom or did you? No, we ended up not. And I'm glad for that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you did not believe they it would call, be a real game. They called game. it off. The person I made that bet with called it off and uh, I was wrong. Like, wow. Well, bullet dodged. Yeah, um so there it is next gen the reviews oh, are out for the consoles it's coming out this week as of this once this podcast goes live yeah like the xbox will be launching tomorrow mm-hmm. and the ps5 two days later yeah yeah that's uh, pretty soon pretty and soon. uh, yeah. uh you, there, there will be day one ones right but only available online yeah only oh, both yeah. Of, so both xbox and playstation have made the decision that all, they will be shipping consoles day one. So if you didn't get a pre-order, you can still get one on day one. However, they both said don't line up at any retail store because they're not going to be there. They don't. They're not going to be in store. They've talked to all their retail partners, and every single unit of day one stock will be available online only. Uh, no matter what retailer you, but you decide, but you to can go do with. In, you can do in store pickup. 
Yeah. Like, so, well, I don't know if you can. I I know for sure you can. Like, I guess it depends on the retailer. You might be able to. Yeah, but but you do have to order online for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So so I I and obviously that's smart. Yeah. Yes. You know, Absolutely. you don't want people lining up during a pandemic. I don't want these fucking nerds who haven't showered in fucking <laughs> eighty four days. You know, sitting outside, stinking up the place. I haven't been outside in a down. year. <laughs> what is you the know, sun? Uh, it, 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 this is a weird year. This is a weird year, so it's going to be a weird console launch, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it is like let's just, it is what it is. Um, and so I, I, I'm glad that Sony and Microsoft did work because I, I was wondering because I was I was wondering how much is in their hands, right, compared to like me. Taylors, but they both just decide to okay. We're gonna sit down at Walmart and GameStop and Best Buy and what have you, and say, "Hey, you're not getting stock unless you do it online," which I think yeah. is ultimately a good thing. Yeah, I agree. I hope I can get one. I'm gonna try to get both. I, we'll see. I am gonna try to. I already so I have my Xbox pre-ordered through Amazon. I'm going to try to get a PS5. My only my only big disappointment is I I want to I want to trade in my old fucking consoles, but this. Yeah, you know, online thing is kind of fucking me in the ass here. Like I have, you know, at least three hundred something dollars worth of old consoles that I could just trade in. That's a big, ho- fucking hefty chunk. Big, you know big, what hefty, I'm big chunk of change, especially towards like what's end up going to be like a thousand dollars in in purchases, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And and it's just kind of annoying. And it's like I can't go to GameStop and like if I go to GameStop and just say, "Well, give me cash," I'm going to lose out on like a decent. I guess you could use it towards games. Like pick up Demon Souls and Miles. Like, uh, I mean, like, I guess. But well, uh, yeah, because you can still go in store to to um, to trade in the console, right? And so, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, you could you could use it towards the games, I guess, and you know, pick pick a mile. You know. Maybe I'll get lucky and be able to get a PS Five through GameStop and just trade them in towards it. But you know, we'll see. In uh, my ba- bad news is bad news. Uh, Xbox Series X. So I do have it on Amazon. Uh-huh. Still have it. it. hasn't been canceled or anything, but not arriving until September 19th. So that kind of blows. Oh, November 19th? November 19th. November 19th. So Sad. I got to wait an extra nine days. Sad. So. Bummer. Yeah. My PS5, had I kept it, would have arrived on day one. <sighs> There's uh, people who fucking, I see them on Twitter posting like, I'm getting mine day one from Amazon. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck, man? Yeah. How they getting it day one? What the fuck is this shit? Mm. You know? jealous? What the hell? I it, didn't get like, an update from mine. You didn't? Uh, for my PS5. So, I don't know. Maybe it's coming day one. People are making... Oh, yeah. You too. have one pre-ordered as well, right? Yeah. They're so. like, oh, just change the shipping to... And it'll, it'll change it. And I'm like, I tried it. It fucking doesn't let me choose anything else. Mm-hmm. It's like... It's what? just upsetting. Because I got now I gotta wait nine days. But it is what it is. I got one coming on the way. You know, whatever. What are you, what are you guys thinking about picking up for launch games? <sighs> Probably Miles. Um, Bugs, Miles snacks. and Sackboy, if I get a PS5. No one else um, is joining me on the Demon Souls hype train. Uh, probably. Well, yeah, I was gonna say probably. Well, it depends on how much. How I, when I'm looking at my wallet, you know, if if there's like yeah. a single fly yeah. rising out of it. I, I mean, it is seventy bucks. Demon mm-hmm. Souls. <laughs> it yeah. Is, yeah. It I is played the PS3 game. version. I mean, do I need to play it again? Yeah, that's fair too. Like, this is new to me, right? So this is a brand new game. Yeah. So I'm much more excited for it versus if you already played the, it. It's like the three I would pick up would be. Well, I guess Bug Snacks is part of PS Plus, so if I get yeah, the that's PS5, PS5 that's covered. So then it would be Sackboy and Demon Souls. Yeah, I, I'm. Well, I already got. I already like I said, I printed Miles already. So even if I don't have a PS5, I'm gonna have Miles. <laughs> my my but, thing with Xbox is I don't know if I'm gonna buy a game. Yeah, Game Pass. Yeah. Game Pass kind of covers you, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's just like because like if I pick up an Xbox, I know what I'm excited. I know what I want to play. Mm-hmm. But they're all on Game Pass, right? Like I, I'm, yeah. I'm super excited to play the Series X optimized Forza Horizon Four, right? Yeah, that's gonna be cool. Super excited to play the Series X optimized uh, Sea of Thieves. You know, it's gonna yeah. be sixty frames per second on console maybe, now. Super. Oh, cool. maybe you'll fucking play with me. Maybe I'll fucking play with you. You know, <laughs> now that it's sixty frames per second. Um, maybe I'll even play PS Five or something. I, I, I was thinking outside of first party games. I was kind of looking at like maybe I want DVD special edition. Um, mm-hmm. maybe I want Yakuza, perhaps. Ooh, yeah, I'm not gonna get Yakuza actually. Uh, though that one you're gonna pick up an Xbox for. It. Not gonna be on. No. Well, yes. Well, well you're gonna play the PS4 the... version of Yakuza on PS5. No. So something weird happened okay. today. 
Let me. I want to make sure I get the headline right. Um. I believe it's in yeah, Xbox Yakuza Seven Like a Dragon for Xbox Series X and S has got infinitely oh only in Japan got infinitely delayed. Yeah, only in Japan, which was only in Japan. Okay, I was I forgot about the in Japan part. I was like, did they just infinitely delay it like five days from launch? No, okay, my bad. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, I don't know it's hat. Why? I I don't know. That's very strange. Very curious, but anyway, so no, yeah, I'm gonna be playing Yakuza, so So that'll be something. America, you'll be able to play. And then also, like, Hyrule Warriors is coming around the same time, so, like, I don't know, actually. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Hy- Hyrule Warriors coming out the same the fucking the day after I get my Xbox. Yeah. It's like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so. But, um, a lot of games to play this month, to be honest. A lot of games to play, yep. Um, yeah, there's a lot of games to play. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a weird, it's, it's just a weary ills right there. Just like, uh, I'm never going to catch up. He's, I'm going to catch up. Uh, I admire your confidence. Um, yeah, so we're on the cusp of next gen. Pretty well, it doesn't feel like it, but we are. Yeah, we're here. Um, we are. here we are. Let's see how it goes. Sure, we'll right. have impressions of the consoles coming up soon. Like, our own I think, console. yeah, yeah, maybe we'll get to talk about it. Whoever gets their hands on the console. Yeah. What a crazy November this is. <laughs> yeah. Like what on? The fucking next gen. Yeah. I reward. <laughs> Yeah, Hyrule <laughs> <Not a> Warrior. <laughs> it seems like we avoided our own age of calamity. <laughs> uh, I want to die. Did you see they? There is, um, you know, comparisons now of load times between the PS5 and the Series yes. X between last gen games. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, weirdly enough, seems like the Series X is a little faster. Well, it's from but, it's from uh, maybe not from Rest for PS5. Yeah, it's 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 that has to do with more of the OS. It seems the OS is more optimized on the Series X. So from from rest mode to start to start up, it's faster on Series X. Actually, I just I think the uh, I imagine with the SSDs, like it's mostly between the two a negligible difference, right? Like yeah. I, I'm sure in some things we'll see. Maybe like in backwards compatible games, it'll be better on Xbox. Maybe in like made for current it'll be better on PS5. But even then, yeah. they're both just so fucking fast. Right. Yeah, it, you won't really, yeah. really be able to feel yeah, it one way or the other. Yeah, it's, some of them are a couple. Uh, seconds definitely a big like. upgrade over the hard drives on last gen. Right. It's really yeah, only a thing that you would argue like one way or the other for if you're like a fanboy. Yeah. Like trying. But to otherwise, get one I, out. I, I think that's the case yeah. of both these cons, right? Like, I think the SSD, just the general snappiness of both of them, is just really, it's it's great. You know. The yeah, reviews are very positive for both. Yeah. You know, obviously, it, on the console themselves, yeah. right? You're supposed just to be like, general well usability seems to be just like it, it's so much quicker to get in and out of a game and and what have you at, uh, mm-hmm. on both of these things. And, and I think that is genuinely a big upgrade, you know, as far as because I, I think yeah. they both kind of realize, okay, well, what's graphically? There's only so much we can do to make you feel like this is an upgrade, right? Yeah, uh, diminishing returns are real on that front, right? But like. You know, you can make a difference in usability, and I, you know, and I think also that's why you see more and more games for next gen are targeting sixty frames per second, some even one hundred twenty frames per second, right? Um, versus, I mean, thirty was pretty much the norm, right? Uh, uh-huh. Last gen, I think, I think, it, I think it's funny that both these, uh, both Sony and Microsoft made a conscious decision. Okay, like you know, maybe graphics isn't the, and they're both still very powerful machines on that front too. Don't get me wrong, right? But mm. but I I just think the focal point for both of these things have been like let's just make the experience of playing the game better, um, and, and that's noteworthy in of itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. Like I I see people arguing, being like, yeah, I, this was, has always been an argument, but it's always a stupid one. Like, why do people even care about backwards compatibility? That's the thing nobody's going to use. And I know there's like the numbers and blah blah blah, but like. <laughs> I'm excited to play old games, but faster and better than before. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's really fucking cool. Well, the the, mm-hmm. the numbers on backwards right. compatibility are always so shaky, though, because it's like a like we're we're just in a different time, right? Like like games just have more longevity nowadays. There's just more games in general to play, so there's still just this giant library. And how could you even say okay, a PS4 owner didn't care about backwards compatibility, but that's because they didn't even have the option, right? So <laughs> yeah. you know, like I, I don't even yeah. know how you make that judgment call of oh people don't care about backwards compatibility, you know, like 
It's a big. They didn't have the option. Like, now, now both these systems have the option. Both of them, things yeah. are just naturally run better than they did before, and that's that's cool. I mean, Sekiro. Yeah, it's really awesome. Sekiro is running at sixty frames per second on both of these systems with no update, mm-hmm. no nothing necessary. This is not like a next gen version. Just yeah, naturally. It's all just because the hardware. Yeah. Um, it's just running at sixty frames per second. It's just so much faster. That's so cool. You know. Awesome. It is cool. I, I had a weird roller coaster of emotions about the PS5 earlier this morning in chat. I don't know if you saw <laughs> where I, <laughs> I saw the PlayStation 5 apparently has an integrated play counter in it, which you just, you know, oh, I it, love it that. Counts. Love yep. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the amount of time you're playing the game precise, uh, you know, it's up to up to the minute and seconds probably. And no need to wait like the Switch. It just shows up. Mm-hmm. You don't have to wait fucking, fucking 10, 10 days, days. And then it only updates at five hour increments. Yeah, which is real dumb. And then uh, also supports PS4 games as well. So, which is also really cool. So, I I saw that and I was like, yo, play, I was like, Sony wins. Sony wins. I mean, that's that's awesome. And then later on in the day, I saw, found out they didn't have instant resume. And I was like, JK, they lost. <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, is obviously me being just just joking around but i i was surprised that they didn't have an instant resume like equivalent at all you know um cuz i think the instant resume thing is cool which again i saw people being like it's stupid i mean they're probably sony fanboys but people are like it's stupid nobody wants to use that i what do you mean nobody wants to use that like if your friends like hey want to jump in this multiplayer game you're in the middle of playing a single player game you can just jump in and out you don't have to worry about well let me make sure the game is saved or uh, let me find an auto save point or anything like that. You know, you just okay. Let me s- swap, and it's like real, real fast too. I think instant resume is a really cool thing, and I was just kind of surprised that uh, PS Five doesn't have that, especially since they, you know, obviously it has a solid state drive. I really think that's um, something that can be patched later down the line, though. I think if they see outcry mm-hmm. for it, I think if they see that people want it, yeah. Um, I think because from a like, just can it do it? standpoint it can right it has all the same mm-hmm. fucking hardware right, exactly. that these, these series yeah. consoles have to be able to pull it off so it's just something that you know and I, I i to be fair with the ps5 i think that you know they they redid their whole operating system right started from zero started yeah. from scratch and what that means is they have to build features from the beginning right and, and yeah. i imagine the focus is okay we just got to make sure this thing is working (laughs) Mm -hmm. right this thing is polished for day one whereas xbox they have the advantage of and and, you know you can say there's pros and cons to both how sony and microsoft did it right and like you know obviously sony had to start from scratch but also that gives them you know it it lets it be more exciting and lets them do do new stuff maybe that they didn't think about before they're not held back by thing whatever right but then on the other hand the xbox because it is just building from the xbox one uh ui an operating system, right? right? It, they they can just build on top of that, and that means they don't have to they don't have to start from zero. They don't have to. They can just they have all the features that Xbox One already had, and then they just can go forward with that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think there's a valid case for doing it either way. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not fun, yeah. but yeah. when it comes to quick resume in particular, I think that might have just been a thing of well, oh, well, we might not be able to get it for, ready for launch, but it can come later down the line, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I because I think it's a cool feature. I think they should add it in. But it is. I mean, that is like, genuinely yeah, something cool that the Xbox does, so that the PS5 doesn't. Like that, that, that should be noted. Like, hey, like you know, you, you can just switch between multiple games and leave up. Uh, when I'm playing Yakuza Seven, and then I want to play what you call it? with Brandon. Sea of Thieves with Brandon. <laughs> you knew what I was going to say. I appreciate that. Uh, I can swap in this fake universe where you can actually play it. Uh, yeah. So. So yeah, so that's there. There was uh, that's that'll be future stuff. We'll talk about more and more. Obviously, um, there was a couple of, of pieces of news this week. Um, we got we got some Nintendo sales updates. Boom, 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 it's the quarter. Oh. Nintendo's gonna give you the numbers. What? Give me the the top line. What's on the cover of the newspaper? All right. So big thing. Switch had hardware wise had the. Best second quarter fiscal year, which is third quarter calendar year, July to September. Best quarter for a piece of hardware that Nintendo has ever put out in their history. Okay? They put out 7 million units of this thing in that quarter, which is unheard of 
for fucking July through September. No revision, no price cut. It's just <laughs> Switch is doing so fucking hot right now. You know, mm-hmm. people want the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and with that, they upped their hardware estimate. It was 19 million before. Uh, now it's 24 million. They're already at 12 million before the holiday season, so they're almost certainly underselling it still with 24 million <laughs> units in one fiscal year, which is bonkers, right? Yeah. Um, but here we are. Th- that's just how the Switch is doing, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Animal Crossing is, again, the big story for the Switch this year. It- it's closing the gap between it and Mario Kart. It's only 2.95 million units away from overtaking Mario Kart. It might do it in the holiday season. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, but Mario Kart itself is also no slouch because it's at 28.99 million. They should have just shipped another fucking 10k. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get it to 29. They will. Don't worry. Um, they'll get there. Yeah, they, they'll get there. But what is noteworthy about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is it's almost certainly now guaranteed to pass Mario Kart Wii at some point. If you combine the Wii U version, it already did, but it's going to do that even without the Wii U version of Mario Kart 8. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dang. So there's a new there's a new king. Uh, Mario Kart, Mario Kart's gonna, Mario Kart's just long live the king. Uh, and then you know, and and with that king, there's a new king, which is Animal Crossing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you know, their evergreens just continue to do really well, right? Smash Ultimate is still doing really well. Breath of the Wild still doing really well. These games pull in a million per quarter, right? Super Mario Party is still doing really well. You know why? You can't even be in person to play that exactly. game. I know that's why? that's a little crazy. I guess families it's good for right. You're, you know the kids are stuck. Yeah, at you're home. trapped. People you're trapped right. together. You gotta get something. Yeah. you're already stuck at home with these bastards. Yeah, yeah. but uh, so Mario Party. Yeah, yeah, that, that thing is actually doing really ridiculously well. Uh, baffling. <laughs> Sword and Shield mm-hmm. is still like its legs are just far better than any Pokemon game before it. It's already at 19 million. So it's the first one since Gold and Silver to hit this number. Um, who knows yeah, if it'll actually end up passing yeah. Gold and Silver, but it seems pretty likely that the pace it's going. Sword and Shield is just... It, 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 it's unprecedented for Pokemon since the Game Boy days. You know? Mm-hmm. I love so, it. I love, love to just, see it. Take your, take your fucking low-rendered tree and shove it up your absolutely. ass. Absolutely. Splatoon 2, by it, the way... It will fit more easily because it has lower polygons. Uh, huh? Don't worry about it. I was making a joke about yeah. the tree. Uh, Splatoon um, 2, by the way, uh, just got a major increase this fiscal year, d- doing like 167% of what it did last fiscal year. I don't know what mm-hmm. even is the cause for that bump, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. It's just... I don't either. I just think the, the, I like the it, Switch though. is just so hot. Maybe it just also appeals to like the kind of people who are picking it up for Animal Crossing, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I feel Horizon. like the Animal Crossing audience and maybe the, the Splatoon audience are like... There's some overlap. Yeah. Some overlap. Is there? Um, I mean, they're made by the same yeah. people, so maybe there's just. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe there's just. There's. I don't know. I think they have similar vibes. Yeah. Well, who's to say, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the people, the people I know that have bought a Switch just for Animal Crossing have not even heard of Splatoon, so it's weird. Yeah, I mean, like, it must. It, it also might be very different by region, right? Like, I, I know for sure I've seen this year in Japan in particular Splatoon Two is just really picked up the pace, but I, I think it's generally the case everywhere, right? Um, mm-hmm. so it's just, it's yeah. I mean, Splatoon is also one of the few robust online games that Nintendo's put out. You know, that's like, true. Mm-hmm. You know, when you pick up Animal Crossing, you're picking, you're probably picking up a Nintendo Switch Online subscription anyway, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so you're the kind of person who's already playing games with friends. Splatoon Two is a natural fit for that, right? Like it's Smash Brothers, it's yeah. Mario Kart, and then for online play, next would probably be Splatoon. Actually, you know, mm-hmm. I guess Pokemon is in there as well. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the other final big thing, I guess, you know, September, they did kick off the Mario, the big, uh, Mario 35, 35th anniversary celebration, 3D All-Stars in two weeks, despite getting announced like a couple fucking days beforehand, they've already shipped 5 million units of Mario 3D All-Stars. Um, Mm -hmm. who knows how much that grows in the holiday season. Of course, you know, they're only going to ship until March, obviously after March, no more. Right. Um. Mm-hmm. But 3D Office is already off to a great start. And this kind of had a Halo effect. All the Mario games are just doing really well this uh, this quarter. We saw yeah. big increases for Odyssey. 
New Super Mario Brothers U, like I said earlier, Mario Party. Even Luigi's Mansion got a pretty decent bump, you know? Nice. So, uh, Mario is just doing real hot. Everything Nintendo is just doing real hot right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, well, and I think that Mario 35, and I think that maybe they should do this in general, right? Like, the eShop is themed around Mario right now, you know? like. Yeah. They're, they're very much, it's in the mind space. And so, you know, it's the, it, that, that, like you said, it doesn't just help the new game. It helps all the old games, right? Um, so, like, if Zelda 35 is coming around, right, and they're doing something for that, which will probably, obviously, in all Breath of the Wild 2, um, if that hit, that's surely that has to hit 2021, please, God. <laughs> um, but, you know, at the same time, do it up that way, you know, Breath of the Wild 1 gets bumped, Link's Awakening gets bumped, right? Like. That, yeah, I think I the, think the anniversary the two fucking Zelda it, 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 it has shown that this anniversary celebration has had a very big halo effect in terms of just like Mario and Gen. Every Mario game on the system is just doing better, and so mm-hmm. you know, th- there's something to learn from that. I think you know, I think anniversary celebrations mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, work. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. I, I mean, maybe with Mario, it it, it, it is also just, there is a lot of Mario games on the Switch. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Still... That's why. I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, Zelda has like two. Yeah, games. it's Breath of the Wild and it's Link's Awakening, right? Um, yeah. yeah, there'll probably be more next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I guess Cadence Hyrule also in stuff. there, and Hyrule Warriors, if you want. To Warriors, yeah. But yeah, but just sure. the amount of games with Mario in the name on the. Oh, Mario's insane. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot, and so yeah, that that's kind of the rundown of this quarter. I mean, it's going to be a big holiday season. This is going to be... Oh, I guess I should mention. This is on track to be Nintendo's most profitable year ever. Ever. Mm-hmm. And that that includes, like, you know, think about... Think, like, to put it another way, think about Nintendo at their heights with the Wii and DS, both two systems that were just on top of the world, right? That is Nintendo's best-selling home console and Nintendo's best-selling... Uh, handheld console, and they were both released at the same around the same time, right? So this was Nintendo at their heights. Profitability wise, they are going to be My doing God. better than that generation. So that is just something in to know all how crazy they're doing. God damn! In in all of this in a year, where if you don't count DLC and you don't count remakes and re-releases, they only released like fucking ammo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, this is Clubhouse. How dare you? Oh, Clubhouse okay, Games, by Clubhouse. the way, is doing really well. Like, secretly really well. It's going to pass, like, Xenoblade and, like, a, a couple other games, like, real quick. It, yeah. it, it did, like, another 800k just this quarter. Like, Hey. Wow. Oh, we and love those the other big standout, I guess, I forgot to mention. I'm, I can't believe I forgot to mention it. Ring Fit Adventure. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. R- yes. Ring Fit Adventure did almost another 2 million units. Uh, in this last quarter, it's accelerating. Ring, uh, Ring Fit has already sold more this fiscal year than last fiscal year when it actually released. Wow. Um, nice. And that's before the holiday season. <laughs> yeah. So that's crazy. So, so Ring Fit's like. Uh, almost, I mean, once again, that's another thing that's, that's sort of a perfect fit for the pandemic, right? You can't go to the gym. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, it is the perfect fit for the pandemic for quarantine, right? And, and it's almost at 6 million. It's probably. I, I I shouldn't even say ball. It's gonna hit ten million, and who knows how higher how much higher it gets. So is mm-hmm. that is that is I don't I don't know in comparison, but what's uh what's we oh uh, we fit is just crazy. It's like twenty something it's insane. million or some shit. But okay. is that gonna get we fit heights? I mean, who knows how far? Who knows a how long it'll continue to sell and for at what pace, right? Mm-hmm. But already this is looking to be one of Nintendo's most successful new IPs in like a long time, right? Smash Bros. Smash Bros. Can't wait. Uh, Musamel, I find it that there's nothing in, in life that lights your eyes up more than talking about Nintendo <laughs> quarterly releases. Uh, but, I feel but, like we just talked about this like two weeks ago or something. I wasn't, I wasn't there then. This is. I feel, fuck did we I feel like it's been a while since we talked about. It was MPD. We talked about MPD. Talked about MPD. Yeah, yeah, MPD. But no, Nintendo yeah. sales in particular, it gets me going. You know, it's the light yeah. of my life. <laughs> but we do have a follow up to those MPDs. Yeah. Because you may remember that Avengers got number one. And we were like, is it good? Is it bad? We don't know. Spoilers. It's bad. It's real bad. Uh, so where Enix had their investors briefing today and uh, reported a $62 million loss due to Marvel's Avengers. Um, Jesus. The game cost, they say, uh, they imply the game cost over $100 million to make, but only sold about 3 million copies. 
which is around i mean fire emblem three houses just passed three million copies <laughs> Yikes. um so that is very bad <laughs> for them I, that's outstandingly bad because like think about it like this like a it was very expensive to make right but the, i think yeah. the other problem too like i mean also by the way three million that's less than the first Tomb Raider game that Crystal Dynamics made, the reboot. Tomb yeah. Raider 2013. Which was already considered a sales disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> yep. They took these people off of, they took Crystal Dynamics off of Tomb Raider to make an Avengers game. And then Marvel The Avengers did worse than Tomb Raider. Isn't that crazy? Um, yeah. But also. It's pretty funny. The thing about Avengers, by nature of what kind of game it is, the game development costs are not going to stop they they are keep going to continue working on this game you know mm -hmm. well maybe not <laughs> well yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah depends on how much money they're wouldn't making. it be funny yeah. if they there was this big old hubbub about spider-man being exclusive and they don't even make it that far they just <laughs> they mm -hmm. shut it down they're like <laughs> yeah. i mean it's funny because it's i mean it's very much like an ea star wars situation right now right where you have to be like they have the exclusive rights. Well, I guess they don't. They have the exclusive rights to the Avengers name, yeah, right? To the Avengers. And so, and it's like if you're Disney, you're like, we why don't we give this out for three million? What are you doing? You know, like <laughs> this is Disney's the biggest IP in games, the world. Like what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Every time Disney's I mean, like, yeah, we'll give you this big. I mean, like, like what are they Spider doing? Spider Man, Sony Spider Man, right? Has been like the only mm -hmm. big success. From from Disney, yeah. I, f I feel like this initiative of, of, of like, tr I guess no, that's not true. Jedi Fallen Order was also a really big success. Yeah, Jedi Fallen Order was a big success. Uh, yeah. Well, then, but maybe that's part of the lesson, right? Maybe maybe people just want a really good single player <laughs> licensed game. Yeah, you know, like yeah, like every that's exactly what we want from Avengers was this game is mostly a Crystal Dynamics game, and they know how to make that game very well, right? Mm -hmm. But there's just this layer of like you know games as a service just layered on top of it that doesn't integrate at all stop just stop it people yeah and i think that's kind of a trend in general even outside yeah. of licensed games like like the division Anthem. 2 was a big failure right mm -hmm. um it, it, destiny seems to be the only one that can keep its destiny was the one that started this trend <laughs> right yeah uh, but destiny seems to be the only it, it almost feels like a you know the moba trend right or mm -hmm. everyone wanted to make a goddamn moba but then ultimately the only real like MOBA that could sustain itself at a, at a, at such a high level was League of Legends, right? Mm -hmm. I, I almost wonder if Destiny is now occupying that space for like the loot the loot grind kind of like games as a service game, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh people just want Destiny. If they're looking for that kind of thing, they're just gonna play Destiny. They don't give a shit about anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Um I don't know. I well, I feel like it's hmm? is I feel like it's, it's often like that. Like you have the one game that puts that kind of game on the map. Like you have a Dark Souls game, and then you have a bunch of pretenders. Like the World of Warcraft, right? Yeah, or yeah, Battle like Royale. Breath of the Wild more recently. No, Breath of the Wild yeah. clones so far. We all, our one example is Genshin Impact. Pretty successful. <laughs> yeah. I say Battle Royales. There's been. Well, that one else is funny because there's actually been a couple that have been able to sustain themselves, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, that might actually. I wonder if Battle Royals. I have to imagine Battle Royale. Keeping I up with that. Oh, man. shut up, Siri. Um, <laughs> I, I have to imagine Battle Royales are much cheaper to sustain than. Yeah. Than, like, this kind of game, you know? You don't have to do, like, voice acting for a Battle Royale, yeah. you know? Like, you don't have to do, like. Uh, yeah, I, you can reuse assets in a way I think it's a lot more efficient. Still hard, oh, right? Still like hard. we have I mean, stories like, about where right, he like took like I mean the level that Epic was doing. They took like their entire company and it still wasn't enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, but like I think Battle Royale is kind of one of the only things that it's like oh yeah we still see multiple things that are still successful, right? Like Fortnite's is successful, Apex is still successful, Warzone, you know, PUBG is still doing well for itself, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, Tetris ninety nine. <laughs> Tetris ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest success. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I do think that maybe the industry needs to rethink their stance on like, oh, well, single player games just don't sell anymore, right? When, when Sony and Nintendo and even mm -hmm. EA to an extent, because of Jedi Fallen Order, 
right now have just shown that like oh no there's actually still a really big market for single player games people still appreciate didn't big budget single player games you know didn't the industry have this same take like five or ten years ago and they were wrong then I don't know. It just that's feels like it feels like they've so. been more and more companies have been chasing the games as a service dragon, right? Yeah. Um, and I I don't like you know, that's not to say that all, they're all flops, right? They're, I'm I, they're, I'm sure there's plenty that I didn't name that are super successful, right? I, in terms of games as a service, um, mm-hmm. but I don't know if a game like Avengers that's like what well like for a superhero game is that what people are looking for? Yeah, people. Yeah, that's not what people wanted. Yeah, I heard about an Avengers game. I think people just wanted that single player experience. Well, you know, either one, either a single player experience or like a four player narrative. Oh, you finish wow. right. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be Iron Man. I want to be Thor. I want to be whatever. But not this thing of like I want to equip Thor with this epic fo- forearm armor plate. Yeah, I that, gotta I, do the raids. Like that stuff the, is the thing not about what superheroes. Yeah, I, I imagine like because their whole pitch was you can make. Like your your uh, Captain America is different from everyone else's Captain America. It's like not many people yeah. just want to play as Captain America, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You want to play as Captain America. You don't want to play well. My Captain America. You don't want to play. You just want to play as Captain America. Who can? Well, yeah, I, I don't want to customize Captain America. Who am I to customize Captain America? You know? Right? Yeah. You don't deserve <laughs> that. That's Captain America. He's a big deal. Yeah, exactly. Hey, it, hey. Who was it, asking for this? New meme. Ready? Someone says, hey, do you want to customize Captain America? And then you play that clip where it goes, no, I don't think I will. That, there it there is. is. Retweet. Oh, there we Boom. go. We found wow. it. You know, old Captain America kind of looks like Joe Biden a little. You know, when I before I saw the movie, I saw that gif. Uh-huh. I thought it was Joe Biden. I, when I saw the movie, that was, I'm telling you, that was my first thought. Now it's been funny because that, that image has been popping up back up lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks, it really looks like Joe Biden, doesn't it? It's, God, mm-hmm. it's yeah, it so does. Weird. It really does. Are you saying Joe Biden is Captain America now? <laughs> well, he is I mean, Captain I guess America he's now. Mr. America if he's the president. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. America. Uh, there it is. Uh, so that is, oh, there was something that, there was some other weird piece of news that I wanted to, oh, so we do have direct confirmation, by the way, 667 gigabytes of storage on the PS5, so what was leaked was real. Whoa. So, work with that as as you will. Not much, I mean, we, I mean, related to that news, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War takes 250 mm-hmm. gigs of storage. <laughs> God. <laughs> so you're at two and a half Call of Duties. <laughs> so um, if you had any hope of Activision getting that shit under control, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, and they don't let you do cold storage, right? No, the PlayStation Five does not let you do cold storage, which is a bit of a bummer because the Xbox Series X, and what, what we what we mean by cold storage, I guess we should maybe expand upon, yeah. is that. Uh, so on the Xbox, you will be able to. So both Xbox and PlayStation Five, you need an SSD to be able to play the next gen games, right? Um, mm-hmm. And on both these consoles, you can plug in an external hard drive and play last gen games, and they'll play like they did before on a hard drive, right? Yeah. But so on the Xbox Series S and X, you can transfer your next gen games onto that. You can't play them off there, but you can keep them on there. So that way, you know, if you're switching around games, what you want to what you want to have downloaded to your console, you can switch that around without having to re-download the game or reinstall it. Yeah, game. it would be faster. Right. Yeah. On the PlayStation yeah. 5, if you want to get rid of your PS5 game, your next gen game to make room for something else, you just have to delete it and then re-download it later if you want to play it again. Um, yeah. Which is a little more frustrating, I think. I, I think the cold mm-hmm. storage solution I, I don't know. And I, I do think that's another thing. I mean, A, it should be known. You can't do that. You just can't do that, right? But on the other hand, B, yeah. it might come later down the line. Who's to say? Yeah, yeah that could be patched. Because I think part of the thing, too, is Sony, Sony's... There's very few expandable hard drives on the market right now. I think basically none for PS5, right? Yeah, you cannot... There's because, no SSDs because they were that the, are technically compatible with the PS5 yet. Like, I, I, like yeah. uh, for an additional storage space. Yeah. So as they get faster, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that would matter with cold storage, really, but maybe that's there's some hang up there. I don't know. Um, 
Either way. And the other catch, one little catch, by the way, Sackboy, I meant to mention earlier, not going to have online multiplayer at launch. So. Really? Just. And if you were planning on playing that with your friends, maybe wait a minute. So is that coming later then? They said they said uh, by the end of the year. Weird. Okay. Mario yeah, 3D true. World confirmed superior. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, that's a Mario Maker Two shit right there. Yeah. Oh, uh, that is. It's true. Um. So there it is. Uh. Well, that is that is the news. That is just a lot of different topics we've covered. Um. But. Now it's time, of course, for the list. The list. The list. Follow along in the paste bin below as every week we add a game to an ever-growing list of over 200 different titles, varying from some of the greatest games ever made to some of the worst, right? This is not a top 200. This is a just a list of 200 games, you know? It's whatever we add every week. A different person brings a game to the list. Last week, what was added? Final Fantasy 15. Oh, did you guys add that? We did. Oh, without me? Come on. Bills did the thing. It I got didn't do to anything. It got Oh, Saf. it was Saf. It was, it was Saf. Saf. You're right. Come on. Cuz you are on. That's a game that yeah. I want to talk about. You know, I have a lot of thoughts about Final Fantasy 15. Well, go back well, and listen. Well, it got to that number 184 episode. on the list, Moose and Mel, so you can Oh, that's low. Oh. That's <laughs> yeah, pretty it's where it belongs. Uh, right, right below we fit, which should be higher, and New Super Mario Brothers too. Um, so that that's that. Uh, this week, Musume, although you get to add. All right, you know, what? I was like, I should, you know, uh, I don't want to add a game that Saf would really like. That was the game I was thinking of. <laughs> fuck Saf, you know, fuck Saf. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna add a game that he really likes, and it's topical oh, to this podcast. Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. Um, Hey-o. Where do I begin with this game? <laughs> You're Spider-Man. So I have not I have not Brandon, played this game past. Okay, like so Brandon's not played it, so it's just so. me, Els, and Will yeah. to talk about this game. But mm-hmm. uh, so Spider-Man is a, as I mentioned earlier, is a single player, big budget Spider-Man game. Right? Triple A uh-huh. Spider-Man game. Uh, made by uh-huh. Insomniac, right? Uh and, and that thought alone just incited like a lot of excitement from people myself included right of course i'm just like oh man like a triple a spider-man game by by a developer that makes good games <laughs> you know <laughs> like hey that like uh and so we can finally stop talking about spider-man 2 on the gamecube yeah we no longer then that, that's no longer the metric we have to use you know for what a good mm-hmm. <laughs> good spider-man game is um and, and so th- that thought really excited a lot of people and i think for the most part it turned out well I, I do have my faults with it, though, which I do want to talk about. But before that, I do want to talk about what's good about it, right? It does exactly what it sets out to be. This is a AAA Spider-Man game, and it nailed the most important aspect of being Spider-Man, and that is the swinging, right? Mm-hmm. Traversing the city in Marvel Spider-Man is just a lot of fun. It really is. They nailed the way that controls the physics, just everything about it. it it's so much fun to do. I didn't use the fast travel ever because I yeah I just wanted to swing around even if it was really far yeah I, in fact I had to do it once because you get yeah an you achievement get an achievement for, for doing it like five times I think. Trophy, so, I so I okay yeah. and so I did that to get the the trophy but otherwise mm-hmm. no I like um if something was far away that even the, not only was it like oh I'll just swing there it's like I want, I'm happy it's far away because yeah, it gives me more time yeah. to swing around you know yeah yeah um. And that's just a lot of fun. They, they really nailed And I think that's the most important aspect of being Spider-Man. You know? Well, mm-hmm. that and the world itself. I mean, New York, it looked like New York. I'm from New York. I live in New York. It looked like New York. Uh, yeah. Like, it felt like I could fucking remember, like, where I was based on where the game is. You know? Yeah. I mean? yeah. See, I mean, that's pretty... Pr- I mean, you know, you're hearing it from a New Yorker himself, right? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ills is right down the street from the Sanctum Sanctorum. <laughs> And the, and the Avengers Tower is just... He can see seeing it from his window right now. <laughs> well, sure. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of fun to move through. And, I mean, it looked very, very much like the city I know. Mm-hmm. And that's impressive. That That is just yeah. so impressive, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Any other positive thoughts to add before I move on? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I, I like 
the the characters in the story like uh, it kind of starts off slow with uh mr negative or whatever but where mm-hmm. it ends up at the end is, is actually pretty well done i do like the combat uh for the most part i know it's a little bit of a you know kind of contentious uh, i i mean for you i guess it's contentious for me it just <laughs> feels like a brawler like yeah it's it's very satisfying when you land the the finishing blows and there's a lot of like with the different suits and the different upgrades that you have, there's a lot of uh, variation that you can use, which sure. you can use later on, like for like s- certain uh, challenges, like the mm-hmm. Taskmaster cha- challenges later on. You know, yeah. you get more uh, comfortable with using all these moves, so mm-hmm. it feels good. And, and the combat scenarios usually have like little special markers for you to get better ratings to do this or that, and it really incentivizes mm-hmm. you to kind of use all of Spider Man's uh, arsenal. Right, yeah, um, yeah, which I think is good, and, and I think those do add a, a layer to the combat that makes it pretty fun. Right, I think mm-hmm. I think they did a good job with, uh, I, like you said, I think the finishing touch. That's actually a really good point. Like it, it always felt, it didn't felt satisfying. Can my microphone yes. stay uh, It always felt satisfying to do the finishing blow, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I thought a lot of Spider Man's gadgets were a lot of fun to use, right? Um, yeah, and, and it feels like that, that, that's something Spider Man would do, right? And also, yeah. I mean, let's not discount the the sheer amount of suits that you can use in this oh, game. Oh, it's a lot. And they all do different things. It's yeah, amazing. They each have different how powers. Many you have. And those are very that, it's crazy. Yeah. Like there's there's so much. I honestly didn't delve much into that, quite frankly. Um, yeah, I got all of them. I got. I did get. I got all <laughs> the suits. I just didn't use. Any of them. <laughs> oh yeah, I use all of them too. <laughs> oh, they're I'll really, really good. I did think of like six or seven. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can say it's a huge love letter to Spider Man, right? Um, I, you know, I I think that the story we can maybe get to more specifics. I think that Peter himself is is a good Spider Man in this game, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they they have they have enough. He's he's a little bit older than normal in a lot of Spider Man stories, right? And he definitely looks older than normal. He so does. I thought he was in his like, late twenties. Yeah, and yeah. I, he looks more like Tom Holland now. Um, but, uh, they, they have like a lot of different, they have, a, they have several plates spinning for him at the same time that I think are all good. Right. The, I think that they maybe have a few too many because I think some of them sort of speed up faster than I thought was sort of natural. Um, but Sp- Peter himself is a very good, well-written version of, of that character. Yeah. And so is like the main villain, like spoiler alert the main villain is dr octopus and uh-huh. he's his whole arc throughout the game is very well i agree i, I do agree that dr octopus was a good villain uh he, they they develop in him in a very interesting way now i i'm not someone who has much knowledge of the comics or much of mm-hmm. spider-man media in general but it seemed like a very different take than usual on it was kind of like the uh, Doc Ock from uh, Spider Man Two, the from movie, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that is the mentor true. figure turned vi- like villain, so you sort of feel bad, yeah, right? Yeah, and and I thought that was a that was a, you know seeing that develop was was really good. Mm. Um, I I did you know, and maybe this is just too too grand, or like too, just too like uh, into the weeds, but uh, there was some parts of the story I really didn't like. I I kind of feel like the ending, like you know, they. So, throughout the, the first and second act of the game, you're only really focusing on one or two villains, right? Yeah. And then suddenly they throw the Sinister Six at you, but it just feels like mm-hmm. so rushed, you know? Yeah. You sort of go through the Sinister Six in about two hours. Yeah. And that's the shortest the th- act of the I think game. the third act of that game is my least favorite part by a pretty wide margin. Because the th- third act of the game, well, the sh- it, it, it introduces the most villains, but it's also the shortest part of the game, you know? Yeah. And I thought that was really weird call like the pacing in the story just felt really weird to me you know yeah there's no green goblin right so it's not really the sinister six, uh, six. well yeah yeah it's, i guess it's the sinister six plus mr negative <laughs> yeah right um who is not great yeah he 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 sort of and his and, and him sort of getting brushed to the side for doc ock i sort of have issue with right because well i think the point is that he leads to doc ock yeah it's but like, like his whole origin story is part of what Doc Ox, you know, his sure. whole story too, and it, and it ties into Harry and Norman Osborn, yeah. right? So they, yeah. they they have those intersections, which are nice. But I think I think the third act is also where like, and this is my biggest problem with the game. 
is they introduced like two new factions in the third act, right? Yeah. And that's when you suddenly start to realize, like, oh, they've run out of side things for me to do. Yes. Right? Uh, like, like, that's one of my biggest issues we're just repeating. the side content in this game is overwhelming, but, like, n- not... I really enjoyed the the collectibles at the beginning of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, especially the ones that encourage you to just kind of travel around the city, right? Yeah, uh-huh. landmarks and stuff. But like then that. they start adding so many, so many, so many different kinds of collectibles that A, it feels overwhelming, but so much of it just comes down to clear waves of enemies, right? And yeah. and that's where it started to feel like the combat was starting to show like its weak point because it is. I find it to be very repetitive. I find the combat to be very repetitive. Um, and, and it's well, there's takes, there's a okay, go god. Oh, uh, go I was just gonna say. It takes forever to go through the combat scenarios each time, and mm-hmm. and I I found that as they added more enemy types, the combat got it. It didn't get more challenging or more interesting. It just got more annoying. Is what I found. yeah. I felt that way too. Well, later on, like at the back half of the game, when you have like the silver sable, the uh, silver sable forces yeah. or whatever, those guys are extremely annoying because they all have sniper rifles and rocket launchers, and yeah, wow, yeah. Holy and the jetpack people, like all those people, they're all. It, it, it just every permutation of the enemies just seemed more and more annoying. You know, it wasn't. It, yeah. It, yeah. it wasn't like I guess it is technically more challenging, but not like challenging in a good way. You know, it's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, mm-hmm. and so I did like I did like the like the changes they made to the city as as you saw. Oh them, yeah, like, enter. that is. I did like oh, that. that I thought cool. that they did like the city. You really felt like you know it was it, like. You could see it kind of progress it into chaos, <laughs> right? Yeah. As uh, as they throw the entire world into COVID nineteen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, um, I, I thought that was super cool, right? It, it just, I think, m- my general feelings on this game is that it started off really high, and then it just kind of like was on a downward slope, I guess. You know. As I just got more and more tired of the combat, as I got more and more frustrated, more and more overwhelmed by the side content, I just, I wasn't feeling as hot as I was. And that, that's not the dimension. The things that does good still are really good, right? Yeah. It's still a solid, solid game. But like... I can... I, yeah, yeah. So I, I would just compare it to like a roller coaster, mm-hmm. right? Like, you're sort of... When you're in it, you're just like, oh, we're doing it, right? Like, woohoo, like I'm swinging, I'm doing all this other stuff, right? But like, by the, t- the sixth time you're riding the roller coaster, you're sort of like... Okay, I I got it now. You know, yeah. like I'm starting to feel a little bit queasy. I also and and this part I think is, is like people really differ. I think here when when they want to talk about this, whether you whether you thought this was a, this was a fun element to the to like the plot or if you just found it annoying. I am in the latter camp of anytime they you were not Spider Man, but you instead you were Peter Parker or you were Miles Morales mm-hmm. or you were Mary Jane, right? Yeah, I I found those segments. To just be annoying filler. I know a lot of people say it it it, it helped build to the world and build to the character, and, and I I, I think that. it helps break up the pacing. Yeah, I, I think it does good because I mean, you're not you you have to slow down. You have to like be, yeah. be you're doing stealth gameplay now. You're you're not you know super I, powerful fighting. I think everything. my biggest I think my biggest problem with it is they introduced they didn't introduce enough elements quickly enough for it to be interesting, right? Like I think the last Mary Jane mission where you're or not the last like next last the one where you're like spider-man's around and you're like pointing out like people for spider-man to take out i think that one's oh, cool. that one was right that, that cool. was my favorite of those missions for sure i also and, like the one in the penthouse you know yeah i think that was also good right but but you you go through like five of those where you get there right and it's sort of like i wish that they wouldn't have been so afraid to sort of like every mission that's sort of like here's one new thing for mary jane here's one new thing and it's like i wish they had just given you more of that at the start so you were making interesting stealth decisions because a lot of it you're sort of just sleeping through up to that point, but like speaking of the pacing that's another place where i kind of feel like the pacing is all over the place because some some acts of the game just have way more of those kinds of segments i felt you know yeah uh, i don't know maybe that, that's just, that was just me but i i didn't i didn't i, I mean i didn't feel it but i Maybe it's just because I was doing a lot of side content. I like I did everything in the game, so yeah. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, because like, it, it didn't feel relatively crit path it. I think right. I did. I, well, I did and I didn't because I did. I did a lot of the early collectibles, right? Like I did. The, I got all the backpacks. 
I got all the pigeons. I uh, I did all Landmark. the black. What is it? Black cat. Some black cat, black yeah. cat missions. I did all those. Uh, and there was a couple. Of others. I, I did a fair amount. So it, it was mostly like the only things I really ignored were like the bases. You know, mm-hmm. that was kind of the only major uh, element of the game I ignored. I I found. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. So and I did every side mission, like the said. main side missions and the side quests that were like yeah specifically marked as such. I also found the yeah. side quests to be Tombstone. bad. To be honest, I didn't like the side quests. Yeah, I mean they're like fine. There yeah. was one that really um, irritated me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the I forget what it was. It was like um, it it it, it was like some hacker. Uh, Oh, is it like you're like getting? You should like a streamer or yeah, something. Yeah, she was a streamer. Oh or, yeah. <laughs> oh, I hated that machine. I like that. Really, one. I, <laughs> I mean, it's it's not great, but I mean, I still like. Yeah, it. Fair enough. I think this uh, game has good vibes overall, though. Um, sure. You do more of those in the DLC. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually have negative reviews. impressions about the DLC overall. But I, I the first DLC is uh, eh, it's all right. The second, the Second and the third are good. Okay, okay. fair enough. I, I haven't played those, so I can't like comment on like how good or bad they are. Um, yeah. Where are we feeling on the list, though? <laughs> well, yeah, you go first. I do so. go first, but I don't know if I want to go first. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I'm kind of feeling in the in the Tomb Raider area. Tomb Raider being... 66. Where? 66. I think it's better than Borderlands. I think it's better than Batman Arkham Asylum, so... <laughs> Way above Where's that. Batman? 36. 36. Wow. Oh, oh, I don't think it's as good as Horizon. I don't think it's as good as Superstar Saga. It might be better than... I think it's better than FF4. Did we ever move mm-hmm. that down? Yeah, so... Yeah, but I'm still not long enough, in my opinion. Um, I would definitely put it below Horizon, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I, to me, that's a pretty, like... How do you feel about Awakening moves? I could put it above Awakening, though. Mm-hmm. How would you feel above Pokemon, Red, Blue, Yellow? I mean, I wouldn't, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I would put it right above FF4, personally. I mean, I, I could throw it above Path of Radiance as well. Not that I've played that. I'm fine with that, too. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd be I, fine I, with just, that. I knew I'd get a reaction from you. I'm sorry. I can throw it above New Leaf. If <laughs> just, that, no, I, I, that, was a, that was an honest joke. No, but I, I, I have played Path of Radiance, uh, and I'd be fine with putting it above it. So That was a joke. I just wanted to get you going. But, but I think... I think I'm, I think I'm below Overwatch, though. Sure. Yeah. Uh, do I like it below Overwatch? Uh, I'm fine with the below, Over- I guess. Overwatch is the, is my most played non... Like, most played online game this gen. I, I like it a lot. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that, then. All right. I assume Bill just wants it as high ever as you can get it. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, at number 44, Marvel Spider-Man. Surrounding it, 42, Horizon Zero Dawn, 43, Overwatch, 44, Marvel Spider-Man, 45, Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance, 46, Final Fantasy 4. Okay. That is the list. That is the podcast for this week. We want to thank you all for listening. Who wants the final phrase? Who wants the plug? I'll take whatever you don't want. You bought. I'll do the final phrase. Okay, so moving will plug away. All right, plug away. So, if you like this podcast, you made it to the end. Thank you for listening. Um, we do this podcast every week, once a week, every Monday. You can find us on SoundCloud, on iTunes, kind of whatever podcatcher of your choice. Um, so definitely check us out. You can also find the podcast episodes on YouTube. You can find other things on YouTube that I'll get to in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you want to listen to this podcast, that's where you can, uh, also on the same feed as the podcast. We do the Jump Up Supercast Game Club. We mentioned at the top of the podcast this upcoming Thursday, new episodes coming up. They're gonna talk about Jet Force Gemini. I'm sure it's going to be a great lesson. That's a very interesting game to talk about, I think. You know, one of Rare's uh, lesser talked about games, for sure, right? Um, yeah. And so, you know, a, a 
a a company as as storied as Rare. I think it's interesting to talk about one of their one one of their lesser known games. So check that out. It's gonna be really good. Um, that's every other Thursday. Um, besides, also if you want to keep up with the list, you can have to listen to the game club because the game club at the end of the episode they add to the list whatever game they played. So we check it out. Uh, we're also on other platforms. I think uh, Twitch. Plug the Twitch here. Twitch.tv slash Jump Up Super Dead. We're now affiliates, which means you can subscribe to us. Ayo. Um, we stream actually pretty often. I just started streaming my playthrough of Super Mario Sunshine. And let me tell you, it's already... It's sunshine. <laughs> um. So it you know I I finished a whole blind playthrough of Mars Sword. This one's not blind, but still it's been it's been a while since I've Sunshine, and I think it's been interesting going back to it. I think it's it, it's both fun and painful to watch. So come come check it out. <laughs> um, otherwise, Brandon also streams random things. Sometimes he'll stream Fall Guys. Sometimes he'll stream uh, Game Club games. You know who knows what Brandon feels like streaming. You know. Whatever. Uh, and you can find archives of our, our Twitch. So if you want to go through my Mario 64 playthrough, that's something else you could find on the YouTube channel. So you just got to search Jump Up Supercast on any of these platforms. Um, Twitter is a great place to find us because Twitter, you'll find out when new podcasts go live. You'll find out when we're streaming. You'll find out when new YouTube stuff goes up. And all your central hub for everything Jump Up Supercast is on twitter.com slash jumpupsupercast. So give us a follow there. That'd be great. Uh, we're on the Facebook. We're on Instagram. Check us out on those platforms. Maybe one day we'll be on TikTok. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> um, Seriously. <laughs> we're all too old for TikTok, I guess. Um, but you know what? Let us know if you want us on TikTok. We'll, we'll look into it. And <laughs> Uh, otherwise, uh, we're on Patreon. If you really liked us and you really want to support us, uh, you could throw us a dollar or how much ever you want to give us to support this podcast, help us keep going. Uh, it really helps a lot. You know, we, you know, we, we, we do take out of our time to do this. And so it, it helps. It, it helps. It makes us feel good. It makes us want to do a better product too. You, know? you don't have to do it, but it, 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 it's a nice encouragement, you know? <laughs> um, there's some Patreon benefits with that. You, you know, you can get into our Discord channel. You can talk to us directly. You, you can listen in live on podcast recordings. You get to suggest games for the game club. Um, once every round, basically, you get to enter in a raffle to pick the game club game. So yeah, you, Jet Force Gemini. Hey, Jet Force Gemini was whatever. a Patreon game. You can make them play whatever you want. It could be something truly god awful. And if you suggest it, it's under 25 hours on howlongtobeat.com, they will play through and beat it. So, you know, that's a lot of power to wield for just a couple dollars a month. I'm just saying. Uh, Scary. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, I think that about covers the plugs, unless I'm forgetting something and you want to chime in. But other than that, Brandon, take it away. Um. So... When we upload this podcast, I'm losing my voice. Holy fuck. <clears throat> anyway, when we upload this podcast on Monday, um, man, next gen starts tomorrow, man. Um, so if you get a next gen console, whether it's the Xbox Series X or the PS5, I just want to say I hope you have a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy your, uh, your, your shortened load times. I hope you enjoy that 4K 60 frames a second. I just hope you have fun playing video games, man. And uh, I just want to say, you know, no matter what console you buy, whether you're buying, if you buy both, that's awesome. Uh, but if you're buying one over the other, you know, for whatever reason, um, take 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 yourself a second to just say, uh, I'm glad I bought this console, but um, you know, there's other people who like the other one. And don't start a console war. Because if you want to just, if you want to be that guy, I'm just gonna say go fuck yourself. And one last thing: if you voted for Donald Trump, <laughs> go fuck yourself.